G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I've got a quick topic in PyRabbit uh, from a user request about storing and reopening views. So thanks to Surge for their request. Um, they asked me how they can reopen sets of views that they've stored uh, before while they're working in their model. So they want to be able to do some work, have some views open, remember which ones were open, move on, and then come back later by reopening them using a get and set toolkit. Um, so we will be doing a few steps. Of course, the first thing we'll do is be getting the opened views. In this case, we'll actually get their IDs as a string that we can break up later. Um, we're going to write this to what's called a pickle file in PyRabbit, um, which is a really easy system built into the toolkit that allows you to store and load data in simple forms. Um, as well as this, you could use things like CSV files stored on your desktop automatically. But the point is you want it to be something that the user doesn't have to go and specify every single time. So this is a very quick sort of operation. You want to use it to just do a couple of button presses to really easily do. From there, we're going to load and retrieve those strings and turn them back into views and try to reopen them in the same model. Now we're gonna to have to be careful because of course, maybe the views don't exist anymore. So maybe we'll need to make sure that we just try to open them. There'll be a few sort of error steps that we catch along the way. So today I'll be using Autodesk Revit 2024 and PyRevit, um, no other third party solutions. Uh, so it should be a nice, useful and handy little workflow to recreate if you want to as well. Of course, as always, you'll probably need a little bit of knowledge in Revit, Revit API and Python, but I'll try to explain it as I go. So without further ado, um, let's jump in. As always, if I'm talking a little bit too fast, feel free to slow down the playback speed, uh, but let's just jump straight in uh, into Revit. So in this case, I've just already set up a test toolkit. So I've got a functioning toolkit here and a demo toolkit that we'll build here. So what we're gonna do is do something like this. So let's imagine we have a few views open. And I'm just gonna to go to manage links and just turn off the links because they do slow down this model quite a lot. And let's open maybe like three views and store them. And then we're gonna build this toolkit from the ground up, but this is just demonstrating the proof of concept. So we're gonna store these views behind the scenes. And let's say I've closed a few of these. Um, let's just go and open the views and it should retrieve those views and reopen them in our session if they exist, and there we go. Um, you can see the order's not quite the same. It's gonna just do them by their element ID order. Uh, we could store them with a, an order set as well using keys, um, but in this case, I think it still creates a similar sort of outcome for the end user. So uh, in this case, I am just developing a little mini Pyrova toolbar, so I've already built up the typical uh, folder with an extension with a tab and with a panel. And in that panel, I've got two pull downs, one for the view memory, which is the functioning toolkit and one for the demonstration toolkit. I then have two push buttons. Um, we're gonna begin with the store push button. I then just have a little bundle to describe the toolkit, but I've just got a Python script called script.py. If you're not familiar with the hierarchy of Pyrovit toolbars, I do recommend watching some earlier videos in the Pyrovit series on my channel where I explain all of this in more depth. Um, so let's begin uh, actually working on our tool. So in this case, I'm gonna be working first of all with the store tool. And the first thing I need to do is just import some libraries from PyRevit. So I'm gonna say from PyRevit import, and we're gonna import the Revit library and the script library. That's all we need for this. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually get the UI doc and the open views. So PyRevit uh, allows us to retrieve the UI doc using the revit.ui doc. Um, I like to store it to a variable instead of constantly retrieving it in PyRevit. Um, it's usually better practice because you only have to declare it once if you're using it more than one time. Um, but as well as this, now I'm just gonna be looking um, into the UI doc itself uh, because we need to get a method to open the views in the documents user interface. So I'm gonna go to the UI document class, which we now have an object of. There's only really one in this model. Um, and we're gonna look at the methods because we need to use the get open UI views. Now it's important to note this will return UI views, not views. So once we have a UI view, we can use the uh, view ID property to get the element ID of the view that that UI view represents. Once we have that element ID, we can then use the to string method to convert that element ID into a string object that we can then store in a pickle. So how do we create a pickle? Well, in this case, we're gonna be using the store data uh, method of the script library. 
It's going to require a slot name, which is effectively a file name uh, for the most part, the data that we'd like to store, and also whether it's for the current project, which we'll say true, because we want these to be project specific pickles that we create so that we can remember view states in different models, um, not just one model. So in this case, let's go back to our script now that we have everything we need. So I'm firstly just going to say uh, UI views is equal to UI doc, and then that get open UI views method. And then we're going to be building an ID string. Um, we're just going to build a list of IDs first. So we're going to get, get view IDs. So we're going to begin with just view underscore IDs as an empty list. And we're going to say for V in UI views. We're first of all going to have to get uh, the ID that we want to store. Uh, let's just call this ID string. So this is going to have to go through a few things. First of all, we want to get from the, the UI view, the view ID, and then we want to convert it to a string using the toString method. We can now take this and append it to the view IDs list. So we should at this point now have a list of view IDs in the form of a string. Now we want to join these together. So I'm going to call this ID strings is equal to, and we're going to use the string join method, which takes a separator dot join. And then what do we want to join? Well, in this case, we want to take the view IDs. Now let's just try printing this to make sure it's worked. So if we go to store views, we should see a joined string of IDs. Now we only see one at the moment, so I might've done something wrong here. Oh no, I only have one view open, of course. <laughs> so let's open a couple more views. So I think that's gonna function as intended. And we should see three IDs, and we do. Perfect. So now all we need to do with this is write it out to a pickle. So store data into a pickle. And I'm just gonna use the scripts.store data method that we saw before. So we're firstly just gonna call this view memory. We're gonna store the ID, and I might call this ID string instead. It's really only one string versus strings. And I'm just gonna say that this project is equal to true. This is an optional argument, true by default, but I'll just put it in there so that it's really obvious to someone reading the script that this is intentional. We do want it to be this project. Now when I store, instead of printing, we should now be storing those IDs. So where do these go? Well, these actually go into the app data roaming pyrovit folder by version. So I can see in this case that we should have just updated our Snowden Towers architectural pyrovit pickle for view memory. So if I just open up this pickle, we'll see what we get. And we can see that we have a few helper characters which help the, the pickle be read by pyrovit, but we can see here we have our string of three IDs, which we can now load in in a separate tool. So now that we've written this, we're going to want to go and develop the tool that will now go and reopen those views later. So in this case, we're going to be importing a few more libraries this time because we need a few extra functions. So from PyRevit, we're going to import uh, Revit scripts, but then we're also going to import forms and DB. So we're going to be importing forms so that we can actually uh, show some alerts to the user if anything goes wrong. So under Pyrovit forms, we're going to be looking for the alert class or the alert method. Sorry, uh, it should be in this page somewhere. There we go, the form alert. So we're only going to need to provide a message, and then we can specify what the title of the message is. That's pretty much all we need to do. So we're going to begin just by getting the document and the UI doc this time. Um, so we're going to say that doc is equal to revit.doc and UI doc again is equal to revit.ui doc. Now we're getting doc because we need to also get some elements by ID, which we need the document in order to do. So we're first going to try to get the pickle data. So we're going to try this just in case we can't actually access a pickle because what if someone opens or runs the open tool before they've run the store tool? Well, there's no pickle and it won't work. So I'm going to go and try to get this ID string back. So I'm going to use this script and this time load data method instead. Again, we're going to search for that view memory pickle. And we're also going to say this project is equal to true. We don't need to run data into this like we did last time because we're getting the data instead of writing it. 
So this should return whatever we've read from the pickle file. So we'll now say that if we hit the accept condition, ID string is just going to be an empty string. Now we could also potentially read pickled data with no IDs in it. There are a few strange scenarios where that can possibly happen. So we're just going to catch whether ID string is just empty in both cases. Now, if it is, we're going to catch if no data to use. So I'll say if ID string is equal to an empty string, then we're going to want to exit the script using script.exit method. I'm also just going to tell the user using a forms alert data could not, not be found. And we'll say the title is script cancelled. But if we don't cancel, then we should be able to proceed onwards. So at this point, I'm now going to be reading for each string inside the combined string. We're going to try to turn that back into an element ID, get its view and open that view. So how do we open the view? Well, in this case, we're going to be doing a few things. Uh, first of all, let's just have a look at the open method that we want to use. Um, we'll just check at the element ID first because we are going to have to construct some element IDs. So we're going to be using the element ID bracket integer uh, option. Um, so we'll have to turn our strings into integers and then convert them into element IDs to get their view. Um, as well as this, we're going to be using the get element method with the element ID of the document class to retrieve the elements those element IDs represent or try to get those element IDs because remember the views could have been deleted so that ID might not exist anymore. Once we have these, we're going to be using the UI document active view property. So you can use the UI documents property in order to both get the active view, but also to set the active view. So under UI document properties, we can see there's an active view, which can be both get and set. Now there are other ways we can do this as well. We can request a view change as well. Um, this is another option. Um, we can also refresh the active view and close views after if we want to as well. There's a lot of options for how we can build this toolkit, but I'm going to just make this very simple and just try to change the active view to each of those views in the pickle um, in order to effectively reopen all those views that we had. So we're not going to close any other views currently, but you could modify the toolkit to do that if you wanted to as well. So what we're going to do is try to open the views. So we're going to say for i in, and we're now going to need to split up our string to make it iterable and get each of those id strings. So I'm going to say id string dot split, and I'm going to split it by my separator, which is a comma. So we will now have access to each of those strings inside the join string. So I'm going to try to get the id itself. So I'm going to do db dot element id. Now we're using DB because we're referencing a Revit API class directly to create an object of that class. And I'm also then going to get the integer representation of the string. So we're converting it to an integer, then passing it into the element ID uh, constructor. What I need to do with this ID is now try to set the active view. So I'm going to say UI doc active view is equal to, now because we're putting it on the right side of the equal sign, it's going to set the property instead of getting the property. So I'm going to say doc.getElement and we're going to try and get the view ID and then set it as the active view, except pass. Now you could uh, create a warning message at the end if any views couldn't be open by counting how many times you fail and if fail is more than one, then you know you've, you've, you've got an error and you could tell the user not all views could be found. Um, it's up to you. In fact, maybe let's do that. Um, so let's just say uh, failures is equal to zero. So instead of passing down here, we just say failures plus equal one, which will make failures one more than it was before. So we know if we never fail, failures will just be equal to zero. So then we could just say if failures is greater than zero or is not equal to zero, not equal is probably a bit, a bit easier to compute. And just let's give us some space. We could then say forms alert, some views could not be found. And then we can say title is e equal to scripts completed because it's still finished, it just had some errors. So let's try and set up that scenario. So first of all, hopefully this should just work. Um, let's try open views. It should find all the views, get their IDs and set them to the active view. And there we are, they're open. Let's um, delete L2. 
which will no longer be found by the script. And we should have at least one failure. So it should still open all the views it can, but we should expect to see that alert. And there we go, there's our alert. Um, you could also build a list and it reports the views that it couldn't find, it's up to you. But given the view's not there, it's not a very useful thing to know. Um, so it's totally up to you. I think that might be like a little bit too intrusive on the user experience. Um, so it's up to you whether you want that to be part of the toolkit. But otherwise we can see we've created a very functional and helpful toolkit, which can actually work in different models as well. So because we use the this project uh, argument in our pickle creation and loading, uh, it can be project specific because the pickles themselves have the model names in them and are stored by version. So effectively, as long as your model is the, is a different name, it should retrieve the, re the relevant pickle and stored IDs. And you can do this in multiple files using a single toolkit. So I hope that's been a, quite an interesting workflow. It definitely is a useful little tool for me when I'm jumping between tasks. So you can find this toolkit and other tools and other scripts over on my GitHub. Um, of course, uh, if you, if you uh, enjoyed what you saw today, feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Uh, share it with other people that you think might find it useful. And again, thank you for the user request surge. It was a great topic. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, and if you've got any requests, uh, reach out to me either here in the comments or via email. Um, I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.